If you saw my last video with the young German Shepherd puppy, the first steps that I like to do when training a new dog, we're gonna be adding to that. So in that video, we worked on six different movements, the left heel position, right heel position, center walking in the same direction that I'm going, and then left and right lateral movements in front of us and the backwards follow exercise. With each of these positions, we also worked a sit and a down. Remember, we weren't using any commands. We are praising the dog for the act of following the lure, and then we would give the dog the food at the end, back away, disengaging from the dog so the dog comes back and reactivates us. If your dog thinks that they're the one making you work, they're gonna be way more motivated to train instead of us chasing them around trying to get them to work. So in this video, what we're going to be adding is a reverse heel position. So the dog's gonna walk in our heel position going the opposite direction. And we're gonna work on taking our dog from the center position into the left and right heel position, as well as the dog going from each heel position to the other heel position. Now it sounds like a lot, but you're gonna see that all the movements are very comparable from one another. So let's start with the center. We're gonna get the dog into the center position, which you should know how to do if you watched the last video. And then we're gonna take the dog first into the left heel position. When I first start doing this, I step back with the leg in the direction I want the dog to go. So the dog's here facing forward. I have the dog's muzzle in my hand. I step back, the dog follows the lure. I cut back quickly and I I bring the dog back into the heel position. If the dog's not exactly how I want him to be, instead of me adjusting to the dog, I'm gonna walk forward and give the dog another opportunity to get into the position that I want. Once the dog's there, I give the dog the reward, I disengage, and then we do another rep. Once I give the dog the reward, we release them from the position. We don't wanna keep them in the position unless we're trying to slow our dogs down. But I like speed, and keep in mind that duration can often kill motivation. Movement increases motivation, so we don't wanna keep the dog static very long. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with the right side. We're gonna step back. Once the dog follows the lure, cut back the other way bring the dog into the perfect heel position. Another little trick that we can do is we can do a knee bump if you're coordinated enough to do that. And what I mean is when I'm bringing the dog over to the other side, I can use my knee to bump the dog as I step, which is going to give them a little bit more momentum to get into the position. We need to get these dogs loosened up. Remember, like I said in last week's video, we're training athletes. And then the movement is exactly the same when we're going from the left to the right or the right to the left. If I have the dog in the right, I'm gonna step back with my left, guide the dog back into the position, and then same thing on the right side. You can't do a knee bump from this direction because obviously the dog's on the outside. But besides that, the movement's pretty much the same. Once the dog starts to understand that, you don't have to move your leg anymore. But in the beginning, I do like to step back because it gives the dog the space that they need in order to get into the position that we want. Now, one other exercise is getting the dog to walk backwards. When people first start training their dogs, they often will reward the dog for the act of following the food lure, but then they stop rewarding the lure and they only reward the final position. If we do that too often, then the motivation to follow the lure will naturally start to decrease. We wanna keep that motivation high. And if every time I step back, the dog starts to recognize this picture, the dog says, all right, I already know what you're going to do, and they cut early and they don't follow the full lure. So in order to prevent that, what I do is sometimes I will step back and bring the dog back into the heel position. Other times I'll step back and I'll walk with the dog in the reverse heel position. So the dog doesn't know if we're gonna be moving or we're gonna cut back the other way. And I do that on both sides. In addition, there's another fun little exercise that fits along with this. When I bring the dog next to my leg and I have him sit, if I don't reward them there, I can take food from my other hand and cut them back this way. So the dog will go around my leg, get the food, I release it right there. You have to be quick with your food handling for this one. Once the dog gets the treat, I reload this hand and I bring the dog back into the position right next to me. Once the dog's right there, again, I have him follow the opposite hand. He gets the treat there bring them back to here. So these are fun movement exercises that your dog should enjoy. We're gonna get the puppy out and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now you can see 
young Maverick is a little bit bigger than he was last time. I was sick, so we haven't filmed in a while. And you also might notice he's jumping up on me and I'm not, I'm not doing anything about that. I don't wanna correct this, especially in the early stages, because I don't wanna decrease his enthusiasm to train. I want him to be really motivated. I want him, you see how he's trying to get me to work? That's what we want. So I always have a little phrase that I tell the dog. Are you ready to train? Are you ready? Once we do that, we go right into the training. Now I'm gonna have him walking, good boy. So I'm gonna get him kind of warmed up, walking in each heel position, very nice. So I'm praising, and then I'm giving him the treat right at the end, so very good. And then boom, he gets the treat, and now I release. So now let's see those first movements that I was talking about. We're gonna have the dog in the center position, and now watch as we step back, we cut the dog around, and we bring him into the position. He's not quite perfect, but close enough. We can step back over, step backwards with our opposite leg and bring in the dog. So there he's a little cricket, so I'm just gonna reposition. I lost it, he got the treat. So boom, right back into the center. And there's that little knee bump I was telling you about. Very good. And I like to have him move with the leg. So if you need to, if you are stepping forward, you can step forward first with the leg that doesn't have the dog. So I'm gonna bring him back. My right side's my weak side, you can tell. My left side's much better. So I can step forward with this leg and then have him follow the right leg. Very nice, that one looked good. So let's try that again. And it's gonna take some practice for you and your dog. You have to do a lot of reps to get this. There we go, that one was nice. And then we can step back. Boom, get him into position, very good. Now you're gonna see the movement is again the same when I have the dog in the opposite heel position and I'm bringing him to the other side. Just like that, very nice. So he's a little forging there. Excellent, good job, buddy. Now I wanna show you how we're gonna bring the dog into the reverse heel. We're gonna step back and we're gonna start walking. Excellent, and then release him. Very good, buddy. So again, let's take him into the center. And if your dog's biting at your hand a lot, you can always close, so you got my thumb a little bit, you can always close your fist so they know that they can't get to the reward. Open hand, they think they can get access. Closed hand, they kind of know that they're not gonna get access yet. But I always kind of leave open for him because I want him to be really motivated and have a lot of drive. And that's why I have the tape on because sometimes he catches me. All right, so now that we've added that, remember the exercises is going from the center to the heel position, then going from the heel position to the other heel position, and then the reverse, right? Those were a little sloppy, but those are the movements that we're adding. So now while you're training, you're gonna incorporate everything that we did last week. So you're gonna have your dog in the heel, very good. And now if you remember, last week I had a little uh, text that popped up that said, if you noticed the mistake. I did make a mistake when I was having the dog sit I was sitting him and he wasn't next to my leg. He was a little off. What I wanna do is I want to sit him next to the leg as I stop, very good. And we can do that on both sides. So I can have him stop here, excellent. Oh, we lost the, the treat. Very good, my little man. And you also wanna make sure that their butt is going down. Especially with German Shepherds, sometimes their butt won't go all the way down. And we want to try to do our best to have their butt go down. Notice I'm still not using commands and I'm still not using any markers. The reward being given to him, the exact moment he does the behavior is essentially marking the behavior. Remember, we use markers for two main reasons. Number one, to bridge the gap between the behavior and the consequence, whether it's good or bad. And number two, to pinpoint fine details within our training. And right now, since I don't need either of those because I'm giving him the reward once he's doing what I want, so right there his head is up, and that's what I want. I want his head up, I want him in that proper position, and that's what I'm rewarding, so we don't really need it. Plus, when you're first learning how to train, there's so many different things you need to think about, so you want to keep it simple, and we want to first teach the dog how we want them to move. So that's why we focus on movement, and we focus on the positions we want the dog to have. Good job, buddy. And your training sessions should be fun. What's also really cool about this, what I like to do, if you feel like you have a pretty good flow, when I first start to train or I'm getting prepped to train, 
I put in my headphones. I put in some music that makes me feel good. I don't need to hear myself because all I'm doing is praising the dog really the whole time. And that music gets me pumped up and that energy makes me feel good and the dogs can sense the energy. Remember, your dog is gonna match your speed. So if you want a dog that's really fast, that's really precise in their movements, then you have to do that with your movements. If you're really slow, your dog's gonna have a tendency to be really slow as well. And I like my dogs to move nice, fast, and sharp. So add these exercises, practice this every day, get it to a point where it feels so natural you don't even have to think about it. And then next week, we're gonna be adding some more exercises.